Real populations don't grow at a constant exponential rate. What we see over and over again is that there are density dependent factors that limit population growth. We infer this because we see that growth slows down as population increases. As a classic example of this, we have a study of song sparrows from, again, Puget Sound in northwest U.S. and southwest Canada in Mandarte Island in British Columbia. These song sparrows have been studied for very many years. Sometimes the population has been very high and sometimes very low. In years when population density is really low, that is, only a few breeding females are present on the island, the number of offspring fledge, that is, the number of eggs that are reared up to chicks that then can leave the nest, is really quite high. They might have four offspring flying off from their nest each year. But when population density is high, when there's above 60 females on that same small island, the reproductive rate is much, much slower only one offspring on average per year. And it gets worse for the poor fledglings. Once they leave their nest, their chances of actually surviving to become adults also declines as the adult population increases. So at low population density, a fledgling has about a half chance of surviving to become an adult, but at high population density, it's only about a quarter. Now we also know that density dependence is the result of certain particular ecological factors like food limitation. Voles are a small rodent, very common in the northern part of the U.S. and in Canada. And these populations, again, show density dependence. So the population growth rate here on the y-axis is low or even negative at high population densities. But if we supplement these voles with an artificial supply of food, for a given density, they have a higher growth rate. This means they're being uh, limited in some way by the amount of food, and if we give them more food, they're less limited. There's also an extreme density dependence in space in many different species, especially those with col colonial nesting. So bats who are trying to roost in a cave, seals on a beach, colonial birds on cliffs, even the dinosaurs millions of years ago, there were only a certain kinds of places that they could raise their offspring safely. And as these got too crowded, the excess individuals would have to try to raise their offspring in an insecure place. And so this is a very tight limit on how many individuals could ever be breeding in this area at a given time. Finally, parasites love when hosts are at high population densities. In this study of gerbils, we see that the number of fleas per animal is much higher at high gerbil densities than at low densities. So the number of parasites per host goes up with population density of the host, and the number of parasite species infecting those hosts also increases. The bottom graph shows a study of black and white colobus monkeys, and the y-axis here shows the number of different gut parasite, that is intestinal parasites, carried by each one of these monkeys. And as the host species goes up, the number of different parasites infecting the host also goes up. Now, our initial view of population growth was that it was unrestricted. There would be nothing to limit population growth. Therefore, it would be density independent. And this is where we would get that exponential curve going infinitely up. But in reality, we see in many cases that the population has a clear limit. And the population grows rapidly at first, but as it approaches this value called K, population growth slows down and then halts altogether. And K is referred to as the carrying capacity. So in either case, we see that at low densities, the population will grow quite rapidly, essentially growing exponentially. But in real populations, as they approach the carrying capacity, growth rate slows down and reaches a halt. So K is very important for us in thinking about the fact that every organism on Earth has some upper limit on its population's growth.